everybody. This is Sean and Eric with Pioneer Survival Company coming to you with another episode of Wild in the World. Today we're going to be at Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore at North Manitou Island. Island. <laughs> We had like a seven hour drive to get here, ended up sleeping in the car about six in the morning. Um, it's about one o'clock now. We just did a little sightseeing and walking around the town of Leland. And so we are finally here at the transit or the uh, transportation station and just waiting for the ferry to go. Super excited, guys. Can't wait. As you can see, the ferry just got here. We're getting ready to board it and uh, definitely looking forward to this trip. Uh, it's going to be about a two hour ferry ride, I believe. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Hopefully, I uh, don't discover any dinosaurs over the side of it. Or go puking. You know, Ralph. Uh, ready to go? No, I'm ready. So we're definitely on our way. Like we always say, a good trip starts with preparation. So, you know, we took the time, we called ahead, figured out what we need to do, had to get this ferry. We're on now having a blast and uh, looking for some great things on this hiking trip. Eric, man, how you feeling, brother? It's pretty good. Got a nice that's breeze out here. That's, that's nice and cool. That's the best you got. It's just, it's cool. I mean, it feels great out here. We're going to an island paradise. The best you can say is that's cool. See if I'm impressed. I don't even know what to say about this guy.
just got off the ferry and we are heading to the island. Got our gear, we are ready to go. Locked and loaded, baby. All right, well, we finally made it to the island and uh, we're heading on shore to uh, get an orientation from one of the park rangers. So, uh, we'll be back with you in just a minute. All right, so uh, we just had our orientation. Um, we're just gonna walk um, real quick around the village here. Uh, really cool place, it's uh, awesome, you know, just stepped off the dock and really brings you back to like an old period, a bunch of old buildings and stuff around here so we're just going to show you that real quick before we uh, get on the trail and start heading out. We have a storm moving in so we uh, probably need to walk around here pretty quick. Probably. See, we're coming up to a few of the more historic type buildings. Um, in the main part of the island, when you first get off the ferry, there's quite a few of these, and they're in really well. Most of them are. It looks like they're being restored, and the ones that are restored are in really good shape. Uh, there are others that have signs around them saying, you know, don't go in, danger. Uh, there is one right over here that you can see that they're uh, starting to restore right now. All right, so uh, this is the main trailhead sign. We just walked barely maybe 100 yards. This gets to the main area, which we just said. Uh, we're going to go take this Fredrickson's Place Trail, which is straight. And then we will, uh, looking at the map, we'll probably hang a left up here. But uh, yeah, when you get here, these are all the different options. This place is huge. And so um, I don't know how much time we're going to have. We're going to be doing some filming for online classes for our uh, outdoor core that we're doing um, so we're going to take a day to do that i think we're probably going to hit up the southwest side of this island um, i don't know if we'll get more than that so looking forward to it man it's going to be great take this one real quick all right so as you can see this one is a little bit more ran down than the others. It's, uh, it hasn't been completely restored or anything yet. But it's still in pretty good shape. Uh, I don't see any signs around here or anything saying not to uh, you know, mess around the building. So, I'm a little hesitant here. Oh, yeah. I can just kind of picture what it would have been like for the person living here, just staying out here on their front porch and looking out at the lake. It's just spectacular view of the lake in front of me right now. Must have been nice. All right, so we're taking a row, or uh, we're taking a stroll down this cottage row. There's a lot of old uh, houses that used to be here. The first one that you're going to come across <coughs> is uh, of some historical significance. Uh, it's actually said that it was uh, created by Frank Lloyd Wright.
coming up to a couple more of the cottages here. Um, we were told by the volunteer that these will in the like in the future be restored. Uh, however, for right now, they just kind of repaired the roof, leveled out the foundations, just so they will not uh, you know, fall apart more than they already are. Um, basically, they're just waiting for some funding and then things will go on from there. As you can see, there's still, you know, wildlife and everything, even up here in the main village part on Cottage Row. Uh, pretty awesome just to see deer and get that close to it. You know, right up here in the more, uh, I guess you'd call it more of the developed area. Uh, definitely way more developed than once you get out into the actual forest part. So once you walk all the way down, the very last cottage on the trail is the Katie Shepherd House. This is by far my favorite spot out of all these little cottages. This place is just beautiful. It's, you can see this huge wraparound porch. You have this two-story beautiful cottage. Uh, there used to be a lodge on this island, and after it burned down, uh, this place was actually opened up as um, the inn uh, where Katie Shepherd bring in people and I actually house them. I can't imagine anything more breathtaking than sitting right here on this porch and just getting a, a view of the lake from here. We can't actually get into the house because it's uh, locked up. Um, they're doing renovations on it, but We've held the camera up to the window, and this is just a glimpse inside of the place. Um, all wood, it's just, it's beautiful. Here we have the only known original surf boat of this type. It was believed to be used by the North Manitou Island Lifesavers.
so the trail starts right here you can pick up uh, maps right here and then you just head straight a lot of different places you can go to from this main trail we're gonna take this one straight and then I think we're gonna get on the uh, Fredrickson's place trail and to try and take that to the old cemetery all right so we just walked around real quick and uh, we're at the trailhead so uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and start Feels great out here. Oh, this is a beautiful day out. Bugs aren't too bad either. No, actually, I'm not getting like a bit at all. It's, it's actually not even that hot out. It's about 72 degrees out right now. That's about the average for uh, this time of year in early July. Pretty nice breeze blowing back through here, actually. Uh, that, that really helps. Uh, it's not hot at all, but the humidity is a little bit uh, bad out here, so make me sweat a little bit so the breeze is definitely helping tons of shade back in here uh, as you can see it's kind of a mix of different trees these are uh, you know different evergreens back in here uh, looks like we might have some uh, beech trees maybe some sycamore mixed in here um, saw some tulip poplar back a little a little while ago so uh, as you can see it's just you know it's kind of real thick back in here it's actually just really nice. So as we were walking, we actually ran across this really just amazing area here. This is just full of nothing but evergreens. Um, obviously this area over here, it's kind of low lying. So um, you, want, you want to keep that in mind. Uh, you don't want to uh, set up camp or anything in a low-lying area um, because if you get a rainstorm or anything like that, it could flood you out for the night. But, uh, you know, back behind this low area and pretty much all around here, uh, it's just a nice flat area. The pine, or I'm sorry, the uh, evergreens actually give you this real nice, uh, you know, cushy surface to lay on at night. And uh, you just have amazing shelter. Um, up above you from the rain, wind, everything like that. So, yeah, it's, it's great. All right, so we just came to the sign here. We got, if we were going to keep on going, uh, that'd be 3.2 miles to the Fredericksons place and the Swinson's barn. We're actually going to go this way. And we are going to take this cemetery trail. I think somewhere around the cemetery we're going to get off to make camp. And then at some point we'll finish up with uh, uh, this Borniks place. All right, so... Um, We've been doing a little hiking. We just, uh, we we're on the main trail. Um, I think it was Frederick's place. Is that what we just got off of? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, we, we were on the trail heading towards Frederick's place. I don't know. I'll re-verify that later. But uh, anyway, we just got off on the cemetery trail. It's, uh, so. Substantially warmer out here. The uh, There's no shade once you get out in here. So it's only in the 70s, but the sun is just beating down on us. Looks like we're getting into a sandier area. I see some sand dunes and stuff off to the sides of us and just huge, just grassy, kind of just meadow, I guess you'd call it. Yeah, I mean, we were just in the woods. Um, nice mature forest and kind of branched out here. We're definitely, looks like we're getting closer to the beach. Uh, well, I think we're getting closer to the beach. There's more sand out here. Like you said, some sand dunes, so. I don't know, pretty cool. 
Um, we're getting ready to head up to the cemetery, so we'll get some footage. It looks like it's an old, an old cemetery. It's just kind of, I don't know if it's that well maintained, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll check that out. So we've only been walking for about five minutes, but uh, this is just giving you an idea of what the trail looks like. You can see it's nice and open. We're just in this open area here. Real cool. It's got a nice breeze cooling me down. Feels great. Oh, you know how we know we're at the right spot? It says cemetery. It does. What's that sign? Oh, this looks interesting. What, what we got there? Cemetery registry or register here. That's everybody that's in it? That is everybody that's in it. Some mm -hmm. of these are pretty, uh, pretty we got old. clear back to the 1800s right here. Yeah. Uh, 1896. I think there's, a, there's an 1882. Yeah, these are... Wow, it didn't look that big. There's, there's actually quite a few. About 22 people. All right, like. you can count. That's awesome. Yeah, pretty cool uh, still gate back here. Old iron gate, I should say. They got a nice uh, fence around all of this. I'm assuming it's to keep people kind of from walking over things, tearing it up too much. Yeah, you guys are seeing it for the first time right along with us, so this is awesome. Not quite sure what's in here. Maybe. There might be some markers in there or something. They're down in the ground a little bit. I honestly not seeing. Oh, actually, there might be a marker in the back. They run around. I'll take a look real quick. Oh yeah, actually, that was in really good shape if the grass was cleared out from around it. 1935, but wow, it's uh. It really does not look that old. That's pretty cool. Alright, so we just checked out the uh, tombstone that we just saw over here. We see some sort of uh, another fenced in area over there, so I'm thinking that might be another, another section to the cemetery, so we're going to go check it out paying attention to where we walk, trying to be as respectful as possible. It's really warm out today. Very humid, just being out in the sun. But um, I'm having so much fun here, man. This is this is a great trip. Uh, oh, there goes the deer. Whoa. Yeah, this place is just teeming with wildlife. This whole island, uh, we, we just oh, were seeing animals another. everywhere. <laughs> oh, those are young, too. We must have just uh, kicked up one of their sleeping spots there. What have we got here? Got some sort of a memorial stone here, it looks like. A glad kindness made the difference. It's from 2011, that's fairly. Yeah. I wonder if that's. Um, in, in memory or maybe some park volunteers or something like that. Uh, when we get back maybe we can uh, ask the ranger about that. He was uh, very helpful actually. He was uh, he said if we come across anything don't move it or anything obviously but take some pictures and he'd be more than willing to answer any questions and if they haven't discovered it yet they'll uh, look into it and let you know. Got another marker here it looks like Carlson from the uh, early 18th century. Well, maybe more like night, late. Uh, I don't know if that's a rock or an old marker, so you might want to be mindful of where you're walking, just so you're not walking on top of people's markers. Um, I don't see anything in here, but I'm assuming there probably is something. It's just probably covered with leaves. Um, I mean, this really all has kind of been reclaimed by nature, so 
It's uh, kind of hard to tell. So I know when we got, um, when we first got on the cemetery trail and came out into the meadow, I swore I saw some wooden crosses back in here, but I'm not actually able to see them now. Found oh, them. hold on. Looks yep. like my brother might have just found them. Yeah, they're up here. Well, let's go back here real quick and take a look at them. So yeah, uh, my brother was down there. Um, I was kind of up ahead scouting. Uh, we've actually found the main cemetery right here. So there's tons of uh, tombstones. We've got some crosses and stuff up here. So come along with us. We're going to check this out. Uh, it's really interesting just seeing all of this old pieces of history out here. It really personalizes the island. Um, just to think about, you know, so long ago, there were people out here actually living on this island. Uh, it used to be an old logging uh, community. So these are probably the people that used to work here. This one right here is clear back from World War II. And obviously we saw a lot of the other ones dating back. So it's really interesting. Actually, it looks like three separate markers here, possibly. S1 US Navy World War II. That's awesome. Iwan Brother and Donald M. Kalinsky, it looks like. We've got uh, Anna Webb over here. This is from the late 1800s. Maybe the marker back there. Uh, hopefully somebody in uh, the Park Service sees this or, uh, you know, may some, maybe somebody, uh, I don't know what department goes around and puts the uh, the uh, stars and flags on the uh, former U.S. soldiers' tombs, but it might be nice to get something like that back in here for them. Oh, these weren't actually wooden crosses. No, they're stone. So it looks like this whole area here is the cemetery. Um, I thought we were coming to an end. Found a few more markers over here. This one is really fascinating looking. Um, like a stone one but it's got real fancy writing and stuff on it i mean just a it looks very old yeah it's just an old handmade one but apparently still awesome to look at. people are still visiting some of these too they're leaving rocks and it looks like a quarter on this one uh are you able to see what that one says sean could be somebody's family uh this is from 18 looks like uh 1896. Oh wow. All right, so uh, we'll pretty much wrap things up here at the old cemetery. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and head to the next uh, stop. Um, there is actually a historic trail directly to the west of the cemetery. Uh, however, they're, they're not maintained and they're somewhat difficult to find. So we're actually going to use the secondary trail, uh, I believe it's called the cemetery trail, uh, that we've been on to get to the next location just because it's a little more defined and easier to walk on. So we've just been uh, hiking along. We just came out of the filled area, uh, the grassy sandy dunes area, getting ready to head back into the woods. So we'll show you a little bit of what that looks like. Um, a blast there. Got anything to anything to add on there? No, not really. I mean, it's just it's, it's just really amazing here. Uh, the diversity of like the different trees and landscapes. Uh, I mean, you're going from like lake views. Sorry, I got something in my eye. You're going from lake views to you know mature forests, the open fields. It's it's so diverse just for, you know, an island to have all of this. This would be a great time just to crash hit you. <laughs> Keep an eye on the video, too. Yeah. No, I mean, you're recording that. Yeah. I see you filming me back there. Wiggle it for me, baby. That's... That's for all the girls out there. That's Pioneer at its finest. Uh, so you can see up here, this is the wooded area we just entered into. Still got great wide trails. A lot of 
A lot of versatility of trees. All right, so we've been continuing up the secondary cemetery trail and we've came up to a fork in the road now. If you go to the left this way, you're hanging to the old uh, automotive graveyard. If you head this way, you're hanging to the Bornique uh, trail. So uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and go to the automotive graveyard first, check that out, and then come back this way and uh, you know, see what's that, so blah, see what is that direction. So we're walking on the trail here to go check out. It's marked cars on the map. We like to call it the automotive graveyard even though we haven't seen it, so uh, we could be totally full of crap by the time we get there. But um, this section here seems to be a little more, we're still on the secondary trail. This section seems to be just a little bit more overgrown. We got more weeds and stuff in the trail, so. But you can see over here, it's got a nice view of the sand dunes and stuff, so. Got a cool breeze coming again, so we're going to go up here. I'm not entirely sure how far it is, um, but we'll see how long it takes us to get there. So we're still heading through the section of the car graveyard, but it actually looks like as we're walking towards that, uh, this is part of the section on the Bornique Trail. So it uh, looks like we're hitting up uh, the, the cabin on one side of it. When we come back, we'll hit that trail up there and explore everything. I think there's a lot of stuff back there, like an old house and maybe a barn and everything. So let's go ahead and get to that car graveyard. What? the heck. This is not a car graveyard. Alright, so <laughs> here's what happened here. We were just going off of the park map, the printed one that they gave us. Not the best map in the world. Uh, there was a small trail off to the side and we just kind of walked past it. Uh, we pulled out our actual, uh, we have a map of this entire island, like a far better one and after looking at that we realized that we're actually at the Anderson homestead now um, we need to backtrack a little ways uh, actually right right before where we were talking about the uh, Bornique homestead there's a little trail that shoots off to the side that takes you to the car graveyard so we'll be hanging back that way in a few minutes after we check this place out yeah this is actually part of the Bornique trail um, yeah so we'll check this place, the Anderson Homestead out here. Then we'll backtrack to the Bornique Homestead and then we'll hit up the car graveyard last. I wonder what this is. I wouldn't think a feed trough or anything. We got a bunch of remnants here of a time long forgotten. Alright. Something to be mindful of. Oh, uh, were you trying to say something? I was. I was ignoring you. Something to be mindful of. of uh, you know, old buildings like these. Um, I don't know about on this island, but other uh, ho old homesteads I've, you know, been to, um, a lot of times they had root cellars. So if you go crawling through this, uh, be very careful. It doesn't look like anything's under this, but you could drop through into an, an old root cellar and, you know, be injured pretty badly. Hey Eric, before we leave, come check this out. I found some, uh, it looks like there's another building back here. I'm not sure what it is. Oh, 
Oh, this could be a hidden gem back in here. Oh, look down below beneath these branches. Caught on branches. This actually looks like it could be a house. Oh, so maybe that wasn't the house up there. It looked kind of small. Oh, yeah, I would sooner say this is a house. Oh, yeah. There's an old sign here, but it's all broken off. Some sort of a warning. So I'm assuming it's saying, oh, don't climb on it. You mean like I had said earlier, there was obviously a cellar in this house because that goes deep down. Yeah, well, that's pretty cool. This is pretty cool. Would have been cooler if it was in one piece. Has the old handmade shingles on top. That is definitely an old house. And there you have it, Anderson Homestead. So here's something to be mindful of while you're out here. Uh, there is tons of sand. That's why I decided to go ahead and wear hiking sandals instead of shoes. Um, I figured I could get the sand out of them a lot easier without having to take my shoes off. However, <laughs> there's so much sand here that uh, even my, ha my hiking sandals aren't keeping up. Let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about here. All right, so check this out. Come a little closer so they can see this. Zoom in on my feet. Ready? I got it still going. I mean, there's still tons in there. So I'll have to take my shoes off here in a few minutes and empty that out. Alright, so we came back from the Anderson Homestead, probably less than 10 minute walk. So this is back to the original fork in the road that we had showed you earlier, which actually that fork in the road, both those trails end up going into the Bornique Trail, so it all goes back to the Anderson Homestead. We were looking at the map. And this, uh, this car that we're looking for is actually on an historic trail. So it's one of those trails that aren't really marked. I've just spent about the past 12 to 15 minutes uh, going off trail, getting back into the woods and everything. I have yet to find this thing. So um, I guess it's really going to depend on how tenacious I start feeling. Or maybe we'll just skip it all together. Might be fun. I don't know. It's a car, probably. So I don't, I don't know. Anyway, we're at Bornique. We're going to head back to the uh, Bornique house and check that out. All right. Well, we can uh, actually see the house coming up here. There's some nice little, uh, uh, nice little rock steps up here that, uh, you know, lead up to the house. So that's a welcoming sight. And this thing is in, wow, really nice shape. The sun's probably drowning a lot of it out, but yeah, this is, this is pretty cool. Unfortunately, it looks like all the doors are boarded up. So you must not actually be allowed to go inside it. Huh. What's it look like in there? So I'm seeing a, there's a staircase that goes upstairs. And obviously somebody's been in this thing because I'm pretty sure when this thing was built, they didn't have polyester camp chairs. Which, is set, up, which is set up back in here. Oh. You can also see there's been obviously repairs made over time. Um, they obviously didn't have the uh, 
the big bolts like that that are galvanized or stainless and uh, there's new shingles on the house. Yeah, I'm actually looking in the window. I see a bunch of lumber in there, so I'm guessing they're doing a repair job. Maybe when we get back, uh, we'll ask the ranger to give us a little history on this place and talk about the renovations that it looks like they're doing. Some kind of sign here. We'll see if that says anything. Uh, nope, unfortunately. Looks like the the sign has been destroyed, so no information on that. All right, let's see what we got here. So we're heading to the, I don't know, just the front or the back of the house? I mean, it looks more like the front of the house to me. It's got oh, those this nice is, ports. And this is awesome. I'm thinking this is where we're going to stop for lunch, maybe get the sand out of our shoes, have a bite to eat, grab some water. Check this out. We've got the, uh, looks like some barns back there. I love this kind of stuff, so I like exploring. Looks like that's bolted and shut. Oh, check this out. So it looks like looks like we had a cave in here. Oh, some some of that must have caved in. Yeah, unfortunately. I'm thinking maybe the uh, second story. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, what do we got here? I don't know. Perhaps an old outhouse. I'm, I'm guessing probably not though, since there's two buildings here side by side. You would be wrong, though. That is an old outhouse. That is the old outhouse. Yep. I wonder if this is a... Looks like a one-seater. I wonder if this is a double outhouse, then. What do we got on this one? It is indeed his and hers. Oh, would you look at that? A two-seater. That is nice. Living a life of luxury there. What we got on the other side? A little bit of a hill, but if you can get over here. Yeah. Let's see if you guys can see me full on carrying this around here. So they actually had the window so you could ventilate this. I mean, it's definitely been broke out by now, but this is hinged. So on these hot summer days, they could let the air circulate through there. Get a you know, cool breeze while you're you're doing your thing. <laughs> All right, what do you say we go take a lunch break? Sounds good to me. <sighs> nice to sit down. Oh, I'm just carrying my lumbar pack with me today. Keep it nice and light. We have a rest of packs sitting over at camp. Something to keep in mind, the only source of uh, actually clean water that you can drink um, without having to filter it or purify it is uh, right when you get off at the dock. So uh, you definitely need to bring a, a life straw or a, a, a grill or something like that. Uh, he purified his water earlier with the grill and then just filled up the canteen. How'd you get so much sand in your shoes? Don't know. Oh wait. Performance anxiety. One in three, I believe. What's this performance anxiety? <laughs> yourself in the situation. Be prepared for circumstances.
So who made this map? MichiganTrailMaps.com MichiganTrailMaps.com If you're coming to the island, this is actually a really nice trail map. It's got uh, your contour lines on it and points of interest, different, uh, obviously the different trails. It lists them as, you know, primary, secondary, and historic. Uh, kind of lists out beaches, grassy areas, and uh, forestry type areas, I guess list the, the different lakes, things like that, so, it's really, my god, yeah. are you still talking? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. This, really, this looks staged. <laughs> really just feel like, it, it just looks like you're staging. Do you think that's safe? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you just ruined the whole scene. <laughs> I mean, this whole time I wanted to look at you and say, <laughs> couldn't do it, but you can just. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Guess we're going to be using the beeps. <laughs> or just cut that part out, maybe. Beep. You don't want to record this? Oh. <laughs> you got the feeling on that action? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> It's not me, man. Stop. It's a fly. <laughs> well, we can't use that now, can we? <laughs> it's a fly. Just take it. Take it in your ear already. Uh, you're so weak. No, I know what you're doing. That could make me punch myself in the face. <laughs> So jumpy. Just turning the camera back off. Uh. So, here is actually that trail that we were on earlier. You just uh, go down there and then it actually connects and that's how you get over to the old Anderson ruins that we saw earlier.
right, well, we just found our spot. We're, uh, we've got this nice cleared area. It's kind of surrounded by some uh, pine trees here. We have an amazing view of the lake out there and kind of a cool breeze blowing in here. Uh, I'm all sweaty from the hike, so I think I'm gonna strip off that top layer of clothing, kind of cool down a little bit and uh, start setting up camp. an eventful day. Um, well, we've been off the boat. We've been hiking for a little bit, uh, which you've seen the footage. Uh, we got, we were on the main trail heading towards Fredrickson's place, and um, we had just gotten up to the cemetery area, and we saw this little side trail leading to the beach, so we skipped over, skipped over that way, and uh, found our spot to camp tonight. It's it's absolutely just amazing the view here. Uh, couldn't ask for more. Um, the flies, they're a low, a little less than desirable. Yeah, it was not terrible, but no mosquitoes though. No mosquitoes at all. The flies aren't actually bad up here by our camp. It's just when you get down on the beach, they get uh, yeah, we found a little bit worse. Probably the best spot that we could have possibly found. We got a nice little wooded area here and uh, you can't really see it at the moment, but we've got an entire view of the lake. So beachfront property right here. And I think we're going to um, settle down a little bit, maybe get some food. I am pumped to see a sunrise and a sunset here. What are you thinking, brother? Dude, it's awesome. Like this is the clearest water I've probably ever seen. Like, yeah. This place is just sweet. I, yeah, I, I don't even know what to say about it. It's blowing my mind right now. First hand, don't burn yourself. How is it? Oh my god. <laughs> that good, huh? It's like, yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm getting hungry just sitting here watching. I'm gonna go ahead and have a bar. You guys can sit here and enjoy this with me. I can't go on a backpacking trip without having some kind of jerky or, you know, some kind of a, just some kind of meat. I can't carry it with me because obviously you don't have refrigeration and um, animals would probably come into my camp at night if I carried meat with me, but just bringing some dehydrated meat really hits the spot. Well, I'm not going to fit the tuna in this, so I'll just eat the tuna separately. Or maybe mix a little in once I get it ate down. But yeah, this this is going to be a meal that uh, it'll last with it'll last me for the day night. It's the airplane. Mm. Oh man. Oh. Actually, that might that might be better than mine. I mean, with the 
tuna in it, that would be even better. Oh man, just having those potatoes was good enough for me. Over here. Oh, yeah. You guys can't see it right now, but we have a visitor back through there. There's oh, is a our deer back? Yeah, deer's moving around. We've been seeing them off and on. Here eating, I'm not paying attention to if it's bo boiling. I don't think so. Am I gonna grab the coffee anyway? Uh. And then, of course, just some water. Staying hydrated, that's key. say my food is ready. I'm just going to stir it around a little bit more and I'm just going to let it cool down. You don't want to you don't want to just bite into these uh, dehydrated meals right after you put that water in it. They're still pretty hot. So let them kind of cool down. Man, crazy he's already eating. So you saw we had set up camp, and um, you know we said that we had a beautiful view of the beach directly behind us. So here it is. We are just walking the shoreline right now, um, just admiring the beauty. It's awesome out here. So this thing goes on for miles, and we're just walking along and skipping stones and taking in nature. It's a good time. A long hike. So, we pretty much just hiked the. Uh, let's see. I guess would be the south southeast side of the island, all the way down to the point. Uh, during this time of year, there are restrictions in place. Uh, if you can see these signs, this is as far as we're going to be able to go. Uh, this is a piping clover. Uh, nesting area and about 25% of the population of the piping clover is actually here on this island and uh, They're an endangered species. So we want to give them their space and uh, you know Let them repopulate in peace All right, so you never really know when bad weather's gonna come in. Uh, we're just outside and enjoying the nice weather and then all of a sudden rain came in. So we've all kind of hopped in our tents now. We're just hunkering down and waiting for the storm to pass over so we can go out and do some more things. But um, it's still nice outside and I'm laying here. It's pretty comfortable, just relaxing. So, yep, hopefully the storm will end soon.
Well, crap. We just got word that the ferry is not coming today due to adverse weather. So this will probably be the end of our video. Uh, just keep in mind, you might get stuck here for a little longer than you thought. Uh, luckily, we're survival experts, so we brought some extra food and, you know, have enough gear to last the extra night through the, the storms and the rain and the cold temperatures. So, it's been a great time here. Let's see if the rest of the night is. Hope the ferry comes tomorrow. Sure do. Of a storm surge coming in, so the water's a bit choppy, but uh, base camp, dump all your stuff, and then you can just walk and enjoy yourself. This is so beautiful. To the dock area and we're actually just waiting on the ferry to show up uh, luckily the ferry is showing up today uh, they canceled the south, the, south manitou yeah the south manitou uh pickup but uh they're still coming here so we're leaving the island Looks today like we're gonna get out on time so yep um yeah it's been fun it's been a it's been a great adventure so i uh, highly recommend anybody you know coming and checking this place out it's been awesome